Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation that involves some trigonometry. This would be a good time to pause the video and try the problem yourself first before you see the solution. Okay, let's get started. So we do have uh, the two times the logarithm of tangent x base 3 equals log of sine x base 2. So first of all, we have two different bases. Let's just realize that. And we have a 2. So I'm going to start by moving that 2 over. So let's go ahead and take this 2 here and move it over as an exponent. So now I can write it as log of tangent squared x is equal to log of sine x. Okay, that's going to be my first step. And the second step, since the bases are different, I can't really actually solve this directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and set it equal to t. So from here, I'm going to be getting two things. First of uh, which is tangent squared x equals 3 to the power t and sine x equals 2 to the power t. Okay, now. I can write tangent squared as sine squared over cosine squared, which can be written as sine squared over 1 minus sine squared. Okay, this is good because now I can replace sine x with 2 to the power t. So that's going to give me 2 to the power t squared, which is 4 to the power t divided by 1 minus 4 to the power t. So this is what I did because sine x is 2 to the power t, sine squared x is going to be 2 to the power t squared, which is 4 to the power t, okay? And this equals 3 to the power t. Now, we do have an equation in one variable, which is pretty good. Even though the bases are different, we're going to take care of this. So let's go ahead and uh, cross multiply this expression first. So we're going to be getting 4 to the power t, t equals 3 to the power t multiplied by 1 minus 4 to the power t times 3 to the power t, which is going to be 12 to the power t. Okay? All right, so we want to simplify this a little bit uh, so that uh, we can kind of make some comparisons. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to divide everything by 4 to the power t. So it's going to look like this, 4 to the power t divided by 4 to the power t which is equal to 3 to the power t minus 12 to the power t divided by 4 to the power t. Okay? Obviously, I, I'm going to have 1 from the left-hand side, right? That's going to be a 1. And the right-hand side, we're going to get 3 over 4 to the power t, because they have the same exponent, minus... Now, they have the same exponent, so I can just divide the bases, and that's going to be 3 to the power t. Okay? Uh, in this form, this is not very helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to isolate 3 to the, three over 4 to the power t. So I'm going to add 3 to, three to the power t to both sides. So that's going to be 3 to the power t plus 1 is equal to 3 over 4 to the power t. Okay? Now, this is good because as we know that 3 fourths to the power t is a decreasing function because the base is less than 1, right? And this is an increasing function, because the base is greater than 1, okay? All right, so what does that mean? You have an increasing function like this, and you have a decreasing function like this. That means they're just going to intersect at a single point. So we can actually find that point by inspection, and that shouldn't take too long if you just try some small integers here you're going to notice that t equals negative 1 is the only solution. Because if you replace t with negative 1, you're going to get 3 to the power negative 1 plus 1 on the left-hand side and 3 fourths to the power negative 1 on the right-hand side. This is equivalent to 1 plus 1 third, which is 4 thirds. And the reciprocal of 3 fourths is also 4 thirds. So this checks. Okay, so t equals negative 1 is obviously a solution. So let's go ahead and use that. How do we use that? Well, if you go back to our initial assumption that we, we said that sine x is equal to 2 to the power t, right? So we're going to go ahead and replace the sine x with 2 to the power t. 
And as you know, 2 to the power t is equal to 2 to the power negative 1 because we just found the t value to be negative 1. And from here, we're actually going to be getting t equals negative 1, right? And now t equals negative 1, meaning that, well, actually, we don't really need the value of t, but we just have from here, we get that sine x is equal to 1 half. And as you know, we can find the solutions from here very easily, right? Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, for this problem. Thank you for watching. And if you like the video, comment and subscribe. If you don't like the video, comment and subscribe. Thank you and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.